new products um, this week. We have um, because you want them, you need them. We have yeah, we have some masks. These are these actually got these. We ordered these a very long time ago, and they finally came in. They're just very low cost, you know, giveaway style masks. They're only about a buck a piece. We have them yeah. in both child and adult size. Yep. Um, so this is the adult size, and we have like a mannequin showing them. They're very simple and very basic, but they're also really cheap. So if you need to like have a mask that you can give away to people, and you don't you don't want to give them your nice. It's disposable. Mask. That's it, it, that's a little bit. It's washable disposable. Yeah. But then it, yeah, if you go and click, so it just shows you the sizing differences. So in the middle are the adult size. Yeah. Like um, masks that we have that are um, like the they are the disposable ones with the sur surgical style. And on the left, this is the child-sized mask. You can see it's the same size as the child-sized um, surgical mask, but it's made out of three layers of cotton, so it's it's better than nothing. So if you if you want a very inexpensive but high-quality yeah. mask, we we have these and they're very cheap. We got these, and uh, we're gonna keep stocking these until this whole thing's over. Yeah. Um, okay. Next up. Next up from Flurk, uh, we really love their enclosures. They're so high quality and they're very beautiful. And uh, we now have their Pi Zero enclosure. Um, and we really like it's a very elegant style. It's like a solid chunk aluminum with um, a top that can uh, fit um, a hat or bonnet on top of it. Uh, so you can see the pieces. And it fits a Raspberry Pi or, uh, sorry, Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero W. And because the top and bottom are plastic, the Wi Fi signal can go out. Because I know everyone's asking, what if it's metal? Can the Wi Fi signal leave? Yes. And then you see here, um, oh, can you go back one? You can see here how um, a bonnet fits perfectly on top and is nicely protected, um, but you can still get off the signals. So a really, this is really one of the nicest Pi Zero cases. And, and here it is. Here's another view of it. So you can see it's a little, um, it's, uh, it's not fully seated down because I have the tall headers. If you had the slim headers, this would sit uh, flat. But, uh, it's a, you know, it's a great little case, and you can easily remove. Hold on. Let me use my patented pry bar to um, remove the bonnet from the Pi Zero and you can, you can plug a cable or just um, connect all the uh, contacts here. So Flurk, they make lovely cases and it's a lovely Pi Zero case. Next up, watch this. Okay, so you got a pebble and you're disappointed because it got, you know, like discontinued, right? Well, this is a fully open source hackable watch. I mean, the hardware isn't open source, although I think the schematics have been posted because the watch is actually from another company. But Bangle uh, is the um, Esperino JavaScript watch. They took like this off the shelf watch that has an NRF52832 and they reprogrammed it with the Esperino firmware. So you can program it with JavaScript using your computer over Bluetooth. And it's like pretty sweet. Um, so it's got this case, let me go back. And this is like the, the startup. So you can see the, the screen, it's a full color screen and it's got, uh, you know, a waterproof, weatherproof bezel. You can do animations. There's buttons on the side, which I really like. And this one is even like a twisty style. It's got buttons, let me zoom into the text. You can press buttons. Um, one of the other nice thing about it is um, there's screws on the back, so you can open it up very easily. So this is one of the ones that is like hermetically sealed. Uh, and then this is the charging port. It comes with a little charging dongle. And there's like a heart rate indicator as well. But the cool thing is about it is you don't need to have, um, you don't need to have uh, like a server. You know, this doesn't connect to like some service to, to get apps or like an app store. Um, you program it directly from your computer using JavaScript and Esperino. If you like CircuitPython or MicroPython, you're gonna be really familiar with this. Esperino is, is JavaScript based. Um, but there's like, you know, just there's tons of people who um, know JavaScript already. And this is like a fun way of making hardware um, see with that device. So this is right. not this is made in England. So this is probably England time, not uh, US time. But you can see the seconds are are pretty close. OK, next up. Uh, next up, we have um, by popular request. These little NeoPixel dots, except now instead of just RGB, they're RGBW. So uh, you can see like one half of the NeoPixel has a yellowish phosphor. On the right side is RGB, but they're just like NeoPixels. They're easy to solder and they're like, used in, in, you know, like weatherproof dots, but these just don't have the silicone coating. But if you just want to have like a very easy to solder to uh, chainable NeoPixel, 
Um, you do have to solder to the back, but then you can use any NeoPixel with RGBW support. Do watch for the, the W part because um, you have to have four bytes per pixel, not three, but most NeoPixel libraries support that nowadays. Next up. Next up, uh, this is a um, sort of a big sister to the uh, NeoPixel JST cable that we've, we had um, that we had for uh, a few years ago for Halloween. It has a JST connector on the end, and it's a one meter long NeoPixel strip with 30 LEDs per meter. I have one here. Oh, catastrophe. Um, I'll plug it in. And what is nice about it is uh, you get the one meter long of NeoPixels that you know and love, and they're in this weatherproof silicone coating, so they're nice and durable. And then this cable comes out, and then you just plug it in to any of our boards that have a 3JST port. So if you have like a Halloween or you have a Pi Portal, you want to add NeoPixels, you don't even have to do any work at all. It's just totally plug and play. Very, very easy um, to get going. And this is just like a, our standard 30 LED per meter NeoPixel strip. So just making it so people who like don't even want to do any soldering or wiring or breadboarding or whatever can just plug and play NeoPixels is always a good thing. All right, and next up, the stars of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Data, the community, the customers, and our team, are these really cool. What do you want to, what do you call this? Is uh, you know, these neon? are ultra flexible, high density LED strips, and they're kind of interesting. So, you know, you saw that like the, the previous product was NeoPixel strip with dots in it, right? And so you see, like, go, yeah, so, like, so you see each dot. You're like, oh, there's the pink dot and there's the green dot. Um, so there's 30 LEDs per meter in this LED strip, but this LED strip has 320 LEDs per meter. And they're like soldered w right next to each other side by side to create a very thin and very diffuse, but very bright and solid strip of light. It's like so bright, it's actually kind of hard yeah, to Yeah, well do. let's... So I'm gonna turn it down. No, we can do... No, oh. no, 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 this is, this is good. No, you wanna do that one? Yeah, 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 believe me, this is the way to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it down so much that you can see mm, okay i'll zoom in you can see this is like turned down like so low it's barely lit yeah. right but you can see there's these little individual dots so those are leds um white leds there's 320 of them per meter and then they're covered with this like there's this clear silicone coating but then below that is this yellow phosphor right that the yellow the covering that makes it kind of like a neutral or warm or cold white LED and like when it's turned down this much yes you can see the individual dots but the moment I turn up the voltage even a little bit to 9 volts or 12 volts um, it becomes like this really beautiful like just it looks just like a line of light it basically looks like what you think EL wire should look like but never did or like or, or neon almost or right? neon it's a neony yeah it's a little it's like it's just like a perfect strip of light you know it's a little bit yeah. like Tron you get like that that yeah it's Tron like it's Tron like you get this like perfect line of light and so um, if if you want you know if I think for costuming and, and definitely for effects or architectural lighting this is great because you know unless you're right up close to it you can't see the individual dots it looks like a, just a pure line of light um, this is again not addressable the whole thing is on or the whole thing is off you can PWM it at 12 volts to to um, dim it if you like uh, and we have it in both warm which is this one mm -hmm. and cool so it's like a cold, cold white i think it's one is like 3000 kelvin one is like 6500 kelvin something like that um but they're both basically the same thing it's just one is you know the phosphor is a, a bluer phosphor and one is a yellower phosphor same basic idea you give it 12 volts and you get this like string of light so mm -hmm. um very interesting but yeah it's a, it's not going to be as like chunky and like diffused as our neon, which is like the big um, chunky strips that look like like literally neon because they're like so chunky and uh, yeah. and wide. Not this. Yeah, I was just gonna show you like it's really nice for costuming. You like you could tell this is meant to be like. Yeah, it looks kind of like like the lasso for Wonder Woman, right? It's like it's just this pure glowing yeah. thing. Um, that's what I was saying. Okay, it's it's not going to be as chunky as the silicone, but it's a lot more flexible. So this is like this is basically as, as flexible as you you know you can you can coil it up 
Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't like crack and bend it, but you can coil it up and twist yeah, it and, and bend it. And this is that. with the silicone coating on it. If you take that off, of course, it's going to be even thinner and more flexible. So it can fit pretty much anywhere. Um, really yeah. cool effects. It's called a chip on board. I think they actually put the LED um, element itself, like the actual um, diode, onto the PCB and then they cover it to protect it. There's no, I don't think there's any soldering. I think they're like, it's like bonded right on. And then on the back is this, um, some 3M tape. Yeah, it's cool. So we'll get this in other colors, but I do, I do like the yellow. Uh, so the, the golden warm white and then the kind of bluish cool white. And honestly, a lot of people like the white in general. It always, I think, looks best. One thing I learned when we went to Tokyo is, is always carry the white LEDs first. Yeah. Best new products.